In this video, I'm going to investigate the most controversial Minecraft client, Badline, and explain why I don't currently use it. Finally answering one of the most common questions asked, we explore the new Badline update together. This new Badline client is rumored to have some great improvements. Let's find out if it will change my mind. Also, I'm giving away 5 whitelist access codes to the Feather client. All you have to do is like this video, subscribe and comment your IGN. And listen, I'm considering hosting another Minecraft account giveaway. So like this video and subscribe if you want another one. Also, by hitting that little subscribe button at the bottom with the bell, you will never miss another video. And let's get into it. Now before we jump into this investigation, I want to provide a quick disclaimer. This video is not intended to be any kind of hate video towards Badline, which has been a trending topic that you may have seen seen on other channels in the past. Instead, this video is going to consist of my opinion towards the client itself, looking at the past and the present version of the Badline client as they just released their new update. I did make a video earlier this year talking about why I left my partnership with them in the past and addressed more controversial topics that we will still touch on today. But with that being cleared up, let's get into the Badline client. So I want to start this video off on a possible positive note about the Badline client. See, I have many critiques and opinions about the Badline client, and if you want to go in the description or just go on the timeline of the video, you can skip to what part you would like to hear. We're going to touch through many different genres about the Badline client and really deep dive investigate into why I personally don't like using this client. But I wanted to start off with possibly the only bright light of this client, the brand new latest version. And as you can see, we are on the main menu right here. Now, apparently there's been quite a lot of changes. And I just wanna say, as you can see, we've got this latest news right here. But as you can see, they have these little icons in the top left now. And apparently you can change the theme yourself from what I've been told. And we're just gonna click on this real quick. And uh, yeah, apparently you can, okay. So you can only really choose dark or, or transparent. It looks like you need to upgrade to be able to create your own theme, which we're gonna talk about a little later on, but that is something already that I don't really like. I would have liked to have been able to create my own theme for the background, but I guess we'll just continue. So we're gonna start off by just hopping on Hypixel and looking at this brand new update. Now it's important to note that throughout this entire video, I will be using the brand new version of the Badline client. So we're only gonna briefly talk about the Badline client update, but you will be able to see me using it for yourself and you can make your own judgment. So getting things started, as you can see, this is the mod menu. Now for years, I feel like Badline has slowly been trying to become more towards like a lunar style client. And that's definitely catched on with the community. I mean, there's been numerous controversies surrounding Badline copying Luna in the past, even to the point where some of the owners of Luna have actually publicly made statements talking about it. Now I don't wanna dive, dive too deep into that, although it is very important to note that the mod menu does look very very similar. Now I must admit, I do like the fact that they have now included like general graphics, better frames, all into different sections. And one thing I can positively say about Badline is that if you are looking for good FPS, I mean, as you can see, we're currently recording in the lobby at about 800 FPS, which to be fair, isn't really something I normally get. So I've got to admit, they do get FPS right. They do a pretty good job on FPS improvements. Now, if you watched one of my recent Lunar Client videos, you'll notice that I mentioned about how they've started incorporating Hypixel stats, for example, Bed Wars and other game modes. Now, as you can see, they also now have this on, on Badline. And I don't know for sure if Badline were the first or the second to incorporate this, but I really just feel like both of these clients are going back and forth, kind of including the same mods to better one another. It's not really something I like, and I would like to see some differences between the clients. What I do find quite funny is that they've now added an oof mod, which to be fair is actually quite jokes. We could try that out, I guess. But in general, this new Badline client update doesn't really seem like they've added that much. On their Twitter, they boast about the new theme manager that you actually have to pay for and become an insider. And we're going to get onto that a little bit later, but it also does mention that they've made better FPS improvements on their better frames, which you can notice. And they've also had a massive Skyblock mods overhaul, which I think most clients at this point do have now, just because of how big of a mammoth Hypixel Skyblock is with, uh, you know, currently, you know, just a light 
you know, just a light 22,000 players online, you know, no big deal. But it really doesn't seem like too much has been added to this update apart from FPS improvements. Now, from someone who is one of the first ever Badline client partners, when the client first released back in 2017, I still remember making that first video. I feel like my opinion is somewhat experienced. Now, I'm not saying you're going to agree with my opinion, but I want you to listen to what I have to say pretty carefully because I want to talk about from where Badline first began to where it's finally at today and what the future could hold for Badline. Now I made a pretty solid video talking about why I left Badline quite some time ago and I'll link it down below. One of the main problems I personally had with Badline was their partnership program and I guess you could say how they treated their partners. It wasn't necessarily in a bad way but at the same time I other clients were now starting up and doing a way better job of communicating with partners, offering friendlier rates to work with creators, and other clients actually allowed you to use other clients. See, at Badline, and to this day, I still believe that creators that work for them and partner with them aren't able to use or try any other client. Now that's completely fine. I get it. Exclusivity. But personally, for someone who likes to try different things, I like exploring different ways playing Minecraft, as you well know on this channel. That just didn't work for me. And that was kind of the first sign. In the last year, there's been a ton of controversy surrounding Badline, which has left many creators confused whether they want to stay or leave Badline. And I do genuinely feel bad for them because at the end of the day, creators should not be getting hate based on where they would like to partner based on what client they enjoy using. They have no involvement in the back end controversy that surrounds it. And I personally don't want to go too deep into detail with what happened in the past at Badline. It's well documented on social media. Other YouTube videos do a pretty good job documenting the news and you know what happened at Badline. I'm not a drama news channel or anything of that type, but I do take the controversy into consideration when forming my opinion on the client itself. From where Badline was first created, the very first design for Badline was pretty ugly, but it was also the first client to try something of that origin. It was in its completely own realm, so therefore making it pretty difficult to judge. But over time, as we've seen other clients like PvP Lounge, Lunar Client more prominently occurring and popping up, you really get a feel that Badline fell behind on their design and the overall performance, which to be fair, has actually improved over the years and like I mentioned at the start of this video, is actually really good for FPS now. That doesn't deter away from the fact that I personally believe Badline looks more like Lunar Client now than it ever has before. And I think a great step would have been to allow everyone to change the theme, the style, the design of the client. This is actually, funny enough, one of the suggestions I made to, the, to people at Badline years and years ago because I really didn't like the design. And I feel like a lot of other people didn't like it either. And that's probably a big reason why a lot of people shy away from using it. Now, I do believe there is some very good working parts to the Badline client if you have the insider rank. And that's the next thing I want to talk about. If you didn't know, Badline offer a premium version of their client called the Insider. And essentially you can pay, I believe per month to have this ability to use a slightly different version of the Badline client. You get access to early updates and you also get access to certain tweaks like the theme manager, for example, as we saw at the start of the video. Hey, before we go any further with today's video, I wanna give a huge shout out to our sponsor and a very large reason behind today's video, Waves Ducks. Now, if you're involved in crypto like myself, you'll understand this very simply, but for anyone else, let me explain. Wavesducks is an NFT game where you can play and earn real money. Every player can earn in-game currency in the form of eggs or egg token, which is what their currency is called, and you can hatch NFT Ducks, the game's main character. Each duck has its set of genes that determines its rarity, as you can see them on the screen, and the higher a duck's rarity, the more eggs it produces, and therefore you are able to trade and sell ducks for real life money, ensuring an annual passive income of up to 200%. The most expensive duck is currently 14,000 real dollars, which is insane. Wavesducks is celebrating their six month anniversary by running a huge giveaway. 
website with a budget of over $100,000. They have 1,153 winners to choose from, and once Wavestucks reaches 100,000 followers on Twitter, they will be distributing all of the gifts. I'll leave a link down below to enter into the giveaway yourself, but that might be the largest giveaway I've ever heard of. Now to get started, it's pretty straightforward. I'll show you on the screen how you can set up an account very easily. It's not very difficult. You go over to the Wavestucks website and you can just click on start right here. I already have my account set up as you guys can see, but like I said on the screen, you'll be able to see it's very straightforward. Once you've got your account set up, you have two options you can choose from. Essentially to start playing, you need to start off by getting the in-game currency egg. And you can do this by either using your card and investing through your own money, or the second option, you can get eggs for free. Each week they start new social media activities, giving you the opportunity to win eggs for a small quest. It's very simple and you can just go on the website and join the Telegram chat right here. It's very straightforward. Now, once you've got your account set up on Wavestucks, you'll be in this little dashboard right here. And if you can see in the middle here, they do have a marketplace. Now, the marketplace is where you can purchase your very own ducks once you've got your in-game currency. And you can base this off of whatever settings you want to search for. As you can see, you can raise the rarity, you can lower it. If you want to go to the rarest ducks possible from 97 to 100, as you can see, these are all very rare based on the genes the duck actually has. And then therefore raises the initial value. As you can see, the initial price, the buyout price. You can purchase now. You can also place a bid. It's very straightforward. The most expensive duck, like I mentioned, on the marketplace is $14,000. Now, if you're looking to invest on the website in different areas, for example, profiting off of other farms, there's a little panel here called Collective Farms. Now, Collective Farms are where a player can buy and share existing farm and collect part of its income, which is shared daily between all of the owners. Collective Farms perfectly suit newcomers as you can enter the game with a minimum investment of $25 and earn an average passive income of up to 200%. Details and investment instructions can be found below. Now, there's something a little fun on here, which I personally quite like, and it's called Duck Wars. This is essentially where players can fight with other ducklings for free under the chosen collective farm banner supported by its Jedi. I'll leave a link down below where you can try this out for yourself. And to participate in Clash of Farms tournaments, you can join Telegram group chats of farm of collective farms that you are with. Now, like I mentioned, you have two options when you make your account. You can either get eggs for free or buy eggs. Now, to get eggs for free, it's pretty straightforward. You join this Telegram group chat right here, and in there, you can get the in-game currency. There is different methods, for example, participating in social media activities and other steps that you can follow. And it's also great to follow with the news of the game itself. And it's also a great group chat to use to keep up to date with news of the game itself. Personally, personally, I'm really involved in crypto, so I quite like Wavestocks, but they recently made the global NFT game top 10 in sales volume. And the game's most expensive duck sold for $24,000, while an average NFT duck costs $10,000. For anyone wondering, the egg exchange rate is currently $1.30, and active players' annual passive income is up to 200%. The project is developed by the team of the Waves platform, which is among the top 50 global blockchains with a market capitalization of 2.5 billion. Now, for anyone who follows crypto, you won't find that quite alienating, but for anyone that wants to follow Wavestucks a little bit more, I'll leave all of the necessary links down below. In fact, when I was a partner at Badline, I believe I had access to Insider and the same features, and it was really good. I mean, the fact you get access to mods early, I believe you get to have a little bit more of an input into the client itself. There is certain features. I think you may even get some free cosmetics. So there definitely is a list of perks to getting the insider rank, but it just doesn't really sit right with me that they're offering a premium version to access Minecraft. I don't know. That might be an unpopular opinion. I don't think Luna offer it currently. I know Labymod offers something similar, but it's more so a cosmetic subscription on Labymod, and I actually see a lot more benefits to it on Labymod. And of course, I understand it's so that they can generate more revenue, and that may help the development and other areas of the client. So it probably does have a very good impact on the Badline client, but I just wish that it would be something they offered to everyone, especially things like a theme manager that really should just be offered to everyone. You know, I'd like to see myself being able to just modify the way the client looks, make it less like Luna and more like a such speed client, I guess, for example. But that's just my take on it. I just don't really believe that there is that many customizations that you need to make a premium version of a client at a subscription-based cost. But it's not really that big of a deal. If you want to pay for it, you're more than welcome to. And and 
I guess it's to show your support towards Badline while getting some extra features, so it's fair enough. So I guess to answer the ultimate question, why don't I use Badline? I guess I have to ask another question. What does Badline offer me that Luna, Laby Mods, Feathercline already offer. What I would like to see happen at Badline is for them to have more of their own theme and go in a bit of a different direction to Luna to create a serious competition there. Because right now and over the last couple of months, it just feels like it's become a little bit more like Luna the, with the way it looks, the way it feels, and I have no problem with Badline. The performance is great, and if you already use Badline and have done for years, then I encourage you to keep doing so. This video wasn't ever going to be a don't use bad line video it's more so my own opinion on why i don't use it and probably why i won't go back to using it anytime soon for the most part i'm either using feather client Laby mod or luna and it really depends on what kind of video i'm making these three clients are great and if i had to pick one that stands out at the moment it's probably feather client just because it's so hyped up you guys loved my last video using it and i want to use it more often in the future i think it's really going to be a great client i really like to using it in beta but the one thing about it is the fact that it's still in beta and they still got a bit of a way to go to the point where it's going to get towards like the lunar client and the labor mod category but it's actually a really awesome client having said that i'll leave badlines link down below because it's it's the it's the least i can do it's the, it's the least i can do this was never supposed to be a hating video on badline by any means but i hope you all enjoyed if you guys did please be sure to leave a like and uh i'll see you in the next investigation goodbye